What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video we've got a few things to cover like a new 3D render of the 4070. We've also got a new 3060 Ti coming out with GDDR6X memory. Is it going to be a good card for mining or mm, not so much? And then lastly, Caspa. Is it getting overrun with FPGAs? Let's take a look. Now before we get into it guys, do me a favor, hit the like and hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And without further delay, first let's take a look at the solar production for today. Today is October the 21st. It's about 9 o'clock at night and it looks like we got about 30 kilowatt hours out of the solar system today. I did finally get up there on the roof and change out the MC4 connector on the one panel that had a bad one. So that should give me about an extra 250 watts. I didn't get around to that until about 5 o'clock this afternoon, so it didn't make much of a difference. You might actually be able to see a little bump right there. But, uh, yeah. So let's talk about this 4070 render. Uh, if you guys didn't see the article from Video Cards, uh, Moore's Law is Dead has a 3D design artist to create renders from a leaked photograph which were unfortunately not published. This way the source of the leak is safe while we get a chance to look at the card from many angles. A similar method is used by phone leakers, leakers simply because it's a safe way of protecting the source. So obviously if they had the exact image, uh, you know, whatever department has that particular photo would be able to narrow it down to a select few people. So we're looking at a 3D render and we'll go ahead and take a look at these enlarged and you know not not much changed um, I do see some very small differences here um, cooler design I guess is a little bit more similar to a 3070 Ti but uh, not a terrible looking card I'm still really confused on why they decided to cut the the, the circle out of the the bezel here but uh, yeah it looks like in line with all the 4000 series cards not a terrible looking card uh, still waiting on specs for this one, but I have a feeling I know what they are, and we'll cover that later in the video. Uh, next, let's talk about the 3060 Ti with GDDR6X. So, according to, let's see here, this is Tom's Hardware. Asus launches GeForce RTX 3060 Ti GDDR6X. And it says somewhere in here, I believe this is supposed to come out towards the end of October. But what I was more interested in was the specs that it's supposed to have. Now, there's not many changes, but some very small variations that I wanted to cover in my... If you guys haven't seen my previous videos talking about TPA, which stands for Total Performance Average, this is kind of a way of getting away from referring to your farm size based in Ethereum's hash rate. So uh, let's take a look just to see where this card is going to fall in line. And we can actually take a look at what I think is going to be a 4070 Ti, which was previously the 4080 12 gig, and also the 4070. So the RTX 3060 Ti with GDDR6X, this is what we've got. We're still going to have pretty much the same specs as the previous 3060 Ti. Only one thing, maybe two things have changed here. So let's just highlight this. So the biggest change is going to be the memory bandwidth going from 448 to 608. And then also the boost clock. So our base clock comes in at 1410 and our boost at 1670, whereas we're now starting off at 1665 and going all the way up to 1775. This puts us at a total average of 82 TPA, which as you can tell, does not outperform a 3070, but it does get quite a bit better. Well, not quite a bit, slightly better than the current 3060 Ti. So the big question is, is, is where is the power draw going to come into play here? 
you know, as far as it being a good card for mining, I think it's going to depend very heavily on what particular algorithm that you're mining. So if you look at something like, let's say, for example, CASPA, uh, you could see a significant increase in hash rate on CASPA, maybe getting closer to the 3070, which does outperform the 3060 Ti considerably on CASPA. But if you look at something like Ethereum, um, you know, anything that's memory intensive, then we're not looking at much of a performance increase. And if it uses more power total, then obviously we'd rather have a regular 3060 Ti. So the jury is still out, but we should see this card towards the end of the month and we should have some answers pretty soon. So uh, going back to the 4000 series, so I went ahead and threw the 4000 series into the TPA calculator just to give you an idea to see if these are in line with the test that we've been seeing so far on the 4090. So 4090 has got a bus size of 384, CUDA core is 16384, memory bandwidth 1008, base clock of 2230, uh, boost clock of 2530 and a total TPA score of 212 as compared to 144 of the 3090 Ti. So, you know, again, this takes into account what I would consider all algorithms and not focuses specifically on Ethereum or ETC hash rates. So if you look at what the 4090 was doing on core intensive algorithms like Radiant and Caspa, uh, it was doubling what we were seeing out of a 3090. So this does actually line up at over an average uh, to be in line with my expectations. And then looking at the 4080 16 gig, um, I won't read all these off, but we'll just take a look at the score here coming in at 141, which is going to put it right in between a 3090 and a 3090 Ti as far as mining performance average across all of the different algorithms, which seems like my TPA score is actually looking pretty solid. And then we've got what was previously the 4080 12 gig listed at what I think it's going to be, which would be a 4070 Ti. And there is not much difference between that and a 4070. The only thing that I could see that could possibly be a difference so far is the amount of CUDA cores being slightly lower on a 4070. And as you can see, we come in at 119 and 114. And when you compare that to anything else up here, uh, the closest thing we're going to be to that is going to be a 3080. So again, Time will tell if my TPA calculator holds up, uh, but it won't be too long and we should be able to compare those numbers. Now lastly, I want to get into something that I saw on Discord, and that is somebody posting something odd going on with CASPA and the difficulty. We all know how much you like to say, I told you so. On that day, Master Wayne, even I won't want to. Uh, they noticed Probably. these four or five different addresses come online very abruptly with a massive amount of hash rate. So I've got these addresses plugged in here. As you can see, the first one is about four terahash. The next one is also about four terahash. And the last one is 15 terahash. That accounts for almost 30% of the total hash rate on CASPA. And you can see right here, we went from 95 terahash all the way up to about 123, 124 terahash. So yes, it looks like either a massive farm came online which seems kind of doubtful to me, considering the fact that if you watch my previous video from yesterday, I was speculating that FPGAs were coming for CASPA because I believe it was Team Redminer just had a release that does support FPGA mining for CASPA. So it looks like that may have come to fruition. We don't know for certain, 
Um, but as many people have already pointed out, this is the natural course of an algorithm like this to go from being GPU mineable or maybe even CPU mineable initially to GPU mineable, then to FPGAs and then to ASICs. And in CASPA's specific case, uh, it may actually be something called optical mining, which we'll discuss in a later video. Uh, Son of a Tech is the one who pointed this out initially, and you know I don't know how far down the line this is, but definitely looks like something that could potentially be a probability in the near future. Anyways, that is all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would, do me a favor, hit the like on the way out and the subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you on the next video.